Hey team, we're here for chapter 12 of Bloom. Chapter 12. With all her allergies, Anaya was used to getting pricked with needles. What are you going to do with all this? She asked, looking at the vials of her blood on the lab counter. It was enough to feed Dracula and everyone in his castle. Dr. Weber smiled. It always looks like a lot. First order of business is your genome. My DNA, said Anaya. Right. A complete map. It could really open up some doors for treatments. Anaya knew this was important, but felt wrong to be here when Dad was out there with the murderous alien plants. Cryptogenic plants. If Dr. Weber thought that word was any less scary, she was wrong. Can you try and call my father soon? If she couldn't look for him, him herself, at the very least, she needed to make sure he was safe. I already sent in the request. They said they'll keep trying until they get through. Thanks. That was something. Next, Dr. Weber dripped two beads of a pit plant acid onto the underside of her wrist. Anaya had absolutely no reaction. They fitted a mask over her face and sprayed it in, sprayed in the perfumed mist from the pit plants and vines. She didn't fall asleep or get dopey. When Dr. Weber swabbed the inside of her nose with a liquefied version of the smoke from the black grass, she didn't even sneeze. Dr. Weber shook her head. It's incredible that someone with so many allergies isn't allergic to these plants. Let's do a quick physical. And I changed into a gown and Dr. Weber listened to her heart and lungs, checked her blood pressure, probed her stomach. You're very healthy, she pronounced. And I laughed. I think you're the first doctor to say that to me. It's weird. But since the plants came, I felt way better. Your other allergies have eased up? Yeah, my asthma too. And she blushed because it suddenly seemed so frivolous. My acne is really cleared up. And I feel stronger, especially my legs. I was going to ask if you were a runner. Your toenails are pretty beat up. Surprised, Anaya looked down. How could she not have noticed this? Some of her toenails were black, like she dropped something heavy on them. Must have happened on the field, she mumbled frowning. They're quite sharp, said Dr. Weber. If you didn't bring nail clippers with you, I can find some. Anaya stared down in embarrassment. The nails on her big toes were jagged and longer than the others. They looked like claws. Your aquagenic uticaria. Dr. Weber said she, as she probed Petra's stomach through her gown, have you noticed any changes over the year? Z Petra didn't feel like talking about her water allergy right now. She was weary of tests and questions. She'd been stabbed and dabbed and misted, and the whole time Carlene Lee was hovering, taking notes, and asking her if she was uncomfortable. She just wanted to go back to the apartment and crash. Not really, except for that rainwater, you know, from the big rain the day before the plants appeared. I didn't get any reaction from that. I washed with it. Dr. Weber was writing on the pad. That's very interesting. If the seeds were in the rain, they might have changed the chemistry of the water. You can sit up now. Can you make me some? Petra asked. For a moment, Dr. Weber looked surprised. Then she nodded. Uh, the water. Well, if we know the exact makeup of a solution, we might be able to synthesize it. We'll look into it. Thanks, said Petra, breathing out in relief. It would just be good to wash properly. I can believe it. The doctor looked at her legs and frowned. How long have you had that rash? Where? Petra asked in surprise. There's quite a bit of scaling on your back and your thighs. Anxiously, Petra reached down and touched her skin. Both legs were extremely rough. She twisted around and flexed her leg so she could see. Oh my gosh, she cried. Over the years, she'd had all kinds of rashes from getting wet, but none like this. It was really red and scabby. Is it itchy? asked Dr. Weber. No, it looked hideous. I can't believe I didn't notice this. I can get a dermatologist to consult with us. Do you think it's the rainwater? Because I've been washing with it. Dr. Weber shook her head. You just washed your face, yes? And no reaction there. So no, I don't think this could be some delayed reaction. Dr. Weber bent to look, then pulled on blue gloves. Petra thought this was a bad sign. When people put on gloves, it was because they thought they were going to touch something really gross. You know, 
I don't think it's a rash at all. It's more like a membrane. Dr. Weber took a pair of tweezers from a tray. It pulls away quite easily and... What? Petra said, alarmed by the pause. The skin is smooth underneath. Remarkably smooth. Petra touched the spot and let out a sigh of relief. It did feel amazingly smooth. Then she looked at the long patch of skin dangling from the doctor's tweezers and shivered. It looked like something a snake had just left off. Do you remember having them? Dr. Weber asked Seth, nodding at the scars on his arms. He wasn't used to people asking about them. I was just little, but yeah. Your records say the growths, feathers, Seth interrupted. The other doctors always referred to them as growths, and he'd never argued because he didn't want people to think he was weirder than he already was. But he felt like he could, do, he could tell the truth to Dr. Weber. He held out his arm. I looked at pictures of bird's wings. They have around 10 primary flight feathers. He touched the scars on his forearm and then up to 20 secondary feathers. He pointed at the scars on his upper arm, which were closer together. The pattern's the same. When Dr. Weber smiled, her eyes crinkled up in a friendly way. All right, feathers. And yours grew to 10 to 14 millimeters in length? They seemed longer. Maybe they just felt bigger to his three-year-old fingers. My little boy was born with exactly the same thing. Seth's pulse quickened. Really? When I first saw them, I said the same thing you did. Feathers. Little feathers growing from his arms. Eagerly, Seth asked, what do they look like now? But he saw the change in Dr. Weber's eyes and understood that look. Something you'd lost and you were never getting back. He would have been the same age as you, but he had a lot of health problems when he was born. He only lived five months. Seth felt the air leak from his lungs. Oh, it's a very rare condition. Doesn't even have a name, but there are others who have it. How many? No one had told him this before. The idea that there were others like him, just the idea that he wasn't alone, was so exciting he could barely wait for Dr. Weber's answers. He had so many questions. Several in this country, elsewhere in the world too, apparently, all the same age as you, more or less. Amazing thing, isn't it? Amazing thing. He'd never heard it described like this. The few times his doctors or social workers or foster parents mentioned it, they treated it like something freakish. And the others, did any of them get? He stopped himself. Had they all died too? Wings? She asked. That kind smile again. She shook her head. They all had their feathers removed when they were young, like you. Oh, Seth said. Are they tender? He asked, gently touching two of the scars with, his, with her fingertips. No, he lied instinctively and then said, a bit. For how long? A couple weeks, since the big rain. She sat back in her chair and looked at him. He knew she was about to speak and he knew exactly what he wanted to hear. It was something he'd wanted for so long but hardly dared to hope for. She said, unless I'm very much mistaken, your feathers are growing back. End of chapter 12.